Hi, everybody. I am Janice Erickson, and I am the owner and co-founder of the Root Press right here in Reno. We're a publisher, printer, and bookseller. And I'm going to be speaking. I'm also the host of What's the Story, which airs on Tuesdays um, from 7 to 9 on 93.7 FM. And then also I live stream from our studio at WeRoo from 3 to 5 live. So... Um, either way, you can either hear the, the replay or you can hear us live on these days. So the reason that I am here talking about question three it has nothing to do with anything except that I'm a citizen journalist that really gave a darn about question three. And when I read about it in 2022, I started to do research on it. I attended a lot of meetings. I talked to a lot of people. And I will tell you that I was misinformed for probably the first, uh, what did you say, Nicholas, couple of years? Yeah, at, least uh, three, at least a year and a half that I was very misinformed, didn't have all the facts that I needed to have. So I kept looking and kept searching. And, um, and, and you can correct me. I know there are a couple of people here that know more than I do about this. But what I wanted to do is to point out a couple of facts, one of which is that my grandson, who is 16 years old, said to me, Grandma, they lie. Grandma, they lie on the commercials. And I said, why did you say that? He says, well, I heard you talking about question three, and that it was ranked choice voting. He says, they never talk about that. They only talk about the primaries. They talk about the open primaries. I thought that was a really good idea. He says, and then I heard you talking, and I don't think it's such a good idea now. <laughs> so, so that really pointed out to me one of the things that, that people probably are not really paying attention to. So open primaries, jungle primaries, as they're called, are so that people of all stripes, doesn't matter if you're an independent, a libertarian, a Republican, Democrat, whatever, you can vote in this primary. But wait, can't we do that now? Yeah, we can. So maybe you don't know it. I've talked to people who say, oh, I can't. No, you can't do that. You can't vote for a Democrat if you're a Republican. Well, yes, you can. If you change your party that day, you can go ahead and vote in whatever party you choose. So it's a false narrative for them to say to us that, that these primaries are necessary in order for people to be able to vote for other parties. The other point that I want to make is that when the candidates come in, they can choose to be whatever party that they want to do. So right now, you've got the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, independents, all the different people, and the Libertarians, yes. Um, <laughs> and they, they, they go through the process of how they name their fan fields. But in the new world, it would be that you can decide you want to be a Republican, and you might be a Democrat normally, but you decide you want an R in that on that bill or on that um, nomination, that's what you're going to pick. So when we go to vote in the primary, if you can, you're not going to know if those folks are really the party that they claim to be. The other thing I want to point out, I, was, I, want, I want you to take a look at the um, State Commission 3 that I passed out. And um, just briefly, um, because these have to be, the way that they write these, they have to be succinct and they have to be a certain number of words. and. So they throw it all in, kind of like spaghetti. Shall the Nevada Constitution be amended to allow all, remember, Nevada Constitution be amended, to allow all Nevada voters the right to participate in open primary elections to choose candidates for the general election, which all voters may then rank the remaining candidates by preference for the offices of U.S. Senators, U.S. Representatives, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary of State, State Treasurer, State Controller, Attorney General, and State Legislators. So when you read that, it's kind of mucky, right? Um, it's not clear that you're not doing the ranked choice voting in the primary. At least it wasn't clear to me initially. And other people it was, but for me, I didn't get that at first. You don't do the ranking until you get to the general election. So what happens is that you've got all these candidates that are there, and right now, an independent or a libertarian is very likely to go to the general election automatically or by signature, as I understand it. So that's great. Then they're going to be on the general ballot. In this scenario, if you've got all these folks that are claiming to be whatever they want to be, 
um, the more popular could very easily be the, f the five that get chosen in the climate. So it's just, I, I just don't want to play too long on this because I really want to get to how the rank choice works. But um, I wanted to make sure, I'm going to look at my notes because I want to make sure I don't miss any points, one of which is that don't forget this is changing our Constitution. And this is the second time that we're voting on it. The first time it passed with 53%, we did try to challenge that count, and we got um, snafued uh, by the Department of, or the SOS. Uh, basically, they didn't allow us to get a recount on it. And truthfully, probably even if we did, it would have come out the same because they won't let you hand recount. They make you do a machine recount, which is just silly. So um, one of the points is that if we change the state constitution permanently, foster the creation of a one-party system, kind of like Russia and Venezuela. Um, and my example is going to show you that. Uh, create a method of voting that no one will be able to challenge the winners. Um, and all third parties are going to be disenfranchised because of it. And then state federal, and federal elections will use ranked choice voting. Local elections will not. So your ballot might look like, um, you know, one race you're going to see, and it's going to say traditional voting. The next race is going to say um, ranked choice voting. And so lots of levels here. I'm not going to get into every aspect of this. I recommend on the, on the uh, document I passed out, there's a couple of um, resources that I added, one of which is uh, nevadapolicy.org. We have a video. Um, also, another one at norcnb.com and then volunteernevada.com. They all have videos that kind of come out how this all works. I will never cover this all in one 10-minute presentation. You have a question? Okay. And I'm sorry, bro. And if you want hold the questions, well, this is quite, it's real. I, it's, <laughs> it's right in line with what we want to tell the door. <laughs> so we're going to take questions. Bro, how about that? We love seeing you flexible. And these, it, it, thank you for your explanation. and not using it. I've got, but do we see a danger? Let's say this danger. I'm, I'm a, a, a Democrat, and I'm against Trump. I switched my vote that day to vote against Trump and vote for Nikki Haley or something like that, and then switch back to Democrat. You do the danger if we, later on, if we don't change that, you do that now. Yeah, you can do it now. Yeah. There are 42 Democrats that Frank, Frank. Yeah, you can do it now. And, and for the ranked choice piece of this, that doesn't have any effect because the presidential race is not included in ranked choice. And that's the confusing part, right? Some of this is, some of it isn't. So, okay, so let's, let's get to, um, can't help, it's really a two-part question, um, though the uh, courts say it's a one-part question. Um, so I wanna go on and, and so I talked about the jungle primary, um, let's do an actual vote. Yeah, I think yes, and then then Jake. Okay, we were going to do this up on the screen, but since it's not available to us, we're going to, I'm going to pass out some paperwork for you. I was prepared for the fact that the electronics might not work. How about that, Phil? <laughs> well, while they're passing this out, um, do we just, we're trying to reform out the two people. And normally the podcast is one, they're doing two, so... But we'll go ahead and you finish up. We'll have uh, five minutes of questions by sure. and this guest to come up, and then Alyssa will come up, and then we'll open it up a round table if anybody has other issues. Um, I've got a question right now for Anna Mountain. So um, does a deep state like this type of voting system? Oh, I forgot to mention that. Thank you for asking. So, yeah, the big money loves ranked choice vote. In fact, the money that's come into Nevada is from all outside sources. I, I imagine there's probably some local as well, but I know that I've heard Wind Resorts donated um, and wanted the ranked choice voting. But for the most part, the money is coming from outside. The Democrats are no on three. And that's a wonderful thing. And in fact, as a citizen journalist, I am going to be inviting um, to the rep one of the representatives from the Democrat Party to come and talk about that, because I think it's really important that we don't vote against each other. I heard somebody say, oh, well, if the Democrats like it, then I don't. 
And um, that's not true in this case. So please look at your, look at the issue, not just who's voting for it. Um, I believe it is Cortez Masto who said she was against it. Um, I know Sisolak was when it first started out. Um, Amade is against it. You know, Republicans are against it. Democrats. Did I answer your question, Beth? Yeah, but, but you know, Claire McCaskill, I believe, was the one who benefited in Alaska, and they hid it up there. My son's an Alaskan resident. He's right. in Coast Guard. And um, they, she would not be our senator. We'd have a conservative Republican senator who wasn't for this. The other thing, too, is there appears to be no way to really check the voting. Correct. It's also computerizing. Yeah, let's, let's do our example. I, I'd rather not go through this until we talk about it so I can kind of explain how we get to the end part here. Um, you probably already know how it's Anyway, all right, so we go to round one, and you've got, um, I thought Gene and Mike were going to be here today, so I included them as our candidates, and then Melissa and Nicholas, because he volunteered. Um, so we have it in round one, and there are no to be five, but I, I decided to do four, and you'll probably see why in the end. Um, so we're doing 100 votes. This is not never going to be this easy in the ranked choice voting, it, but this is just symbolic to kind of give you an idea of how it's going to work. So you've got Gene who, get, Gene who gets 45 votes, Mike gets 25, Melissa gets 25, and Nicholas gets five. Well, because, so that's 100 votes and 100% of the votes, but because Nicholas only has five, he's eliminated. All right? So he got those five votes, and what happens to that, those people's ballot is that they go to their second choice, okay? So whereas our second choice, hey, nightmare is I've, and pass them to the appropriate candidate. So if you turn to the next page and go to round two, and this could go on for a while, and could also take a while to count. Um, my understanding is there are places that it's taken weeks to count this. And then there have been challenges, and in those challenges they found, oh, oops, that wasn't who really won. So um, not real full break. Um, so the five ballots get distributed. In this case, Nicholas's five ballots, their second choice, all went to Melissa. They loved you, Melissa. <laughs> so Melissa ends up with 30. Mike now has 25. Gene has 45. So guess what? Now Mike's eliminated. And again, this is super simplistic, everybody. This is not, you know, that they're going to do this by machine. This is not going to be this easy. But for, for uh, exempted purposes, that's what we got. So Mike is now eliminated. And Mike just walked in the door. Hey, Mike, you just got eliminated. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So his 25 ballots go to their second choice and pass them to the appropriate candidate. So he's got 25 votes hanging out. They pick their second choice. And oh, look, they picked five for G and 20 for Melissa. Look at Melissa. She's now up to 50. She started at 25, she's now at 50. So G has 50 and she has 50. So the wins. Who wins that race? Well, you look at the next page. Yes, it's crazy. They draw a lot. There's no round. They actually draw drum lumps. Sort of draw. Yeah. So it gets a, and I really wanted to keep it simple. Again, it's much more complicated than this. The example is very representative of what's going to go on inside a machine that you cannot tell how it's programmed. You can't question any of that. It's no different than it is now. And so you're really set up for. Who knows who's going to really win? And the, the different trials that I've seen done by different people that have, you know, kind of tried to mock this up, it seems like the third, the middle candidate seems to always win. And, and look at this. Sorry, Melissa, but it took three times before she caught up, even close to where Jean was at the very beginning. So, uh, you know, you have to question why would it take that plus... Those folks are getting more votes than you are. If you voted for Gene, you never got a second chance. The other folks got a second and sometimes a third vote, right? So very um, questionable, I guess, is what I would say. Question three is questionable. All right. So <laughs> um, that, those are the, the, quote, high points. Um, 
And I just would recommend, I, I've been looking at this for so long, and, and I just, I, on my show, every week I tell people, no, I'm terrific. I, I want you to investigate it. I don't like to tell people what to do. But in this particular case, I'm telling you what to do. <laughs> it's rare. Listen to my show and you'll know. It's rare that I tell you what to do. I try to give you both sides. And actually, I did. I had a guy from Ballot Media on, and he, he represented both sides. But I will say to you that it was hard for him to give the argument for the pro-ranked choice. 